Welcome back guys, my name is Toby and this is Driven Intent and today I'm going to bring you guys the 2021 Audi RS7 Sportback. I know two weeks ago I reviewed the RS6 Avant Estate or Wagon, wherever country or you're watching from, but this right here is 2021 Sportback. I'm going to go quickly on this review because there's tons of video out there on this R7 Sportback. I just want to give you guys my general overall thoughts about this car, what it's like to drive, you know, city driving, maybe a little bit of highway driving, braking, acceleration. You guys already know what it is. Stay tuned for the video. guys welcome let's take a look at the exterior I'm gonna do a walk around of the 21 R7 again this paint has this pearl effect on it like this metallic pearl I don't, I don't know if you can see it right now I can't see it on my camera because it's really bright out here but let's go around to the front Just this angle right here, um, <laughs> that is awesome. You see how the wheels are turned to the right? And ever so slightly, the rear wheels are turned in the opposite direction. But you get the picture. This is a 2021 Audi R7, guys. Similar designs from the front, like the R6 Avant. And like from the three quarters, it's a hatchback as opposed to it being an estate. So you get the picture. Quick walk around here of the exterior of the car. I'm gonna start with the front. Again, Audi signature, eye-catching, daytime running LED lights, you know, the vertically stacked, you know, the little dance when you turn the indicator on or when you approach the vehicle and leave the car, get all that picture. You have a plethora of vents in here. See that intercooler? That's the cool, the uh, twin summer charge V8. There's probably one on the other side. Here, it's actually functional to call the big brakes. I believe these are 13 inch rotors or calipers. Around the front, huge, huge grill. Black Audi rings. Now, signifies the black ops package. These are for your cruise control. These are the radars to help with uh, one of the safety features of the car, R7 in black. Again, like I said, another intercooler back here. And this guy right here is gonna be for the front parking aid or front parking sensors, windshield washer or wiper uh, headlight washer, and it's a tow hook right here. I do wish this thing wasn't on there because it kind of ruins the whole look of the front, but it all comes down to, you know, your state you at and your preference as the owner. Anyhow, moving along right here, kind of seems like a little nose and nostril, but it's not, uh, it's fake actually. Yeah, I think from that it's fake. But look at the little gloss on this hood, guys. And look at this lines. You have one, two, three, four. Just, you know, cut through the air, very slippery, aggressive look. This right here is just phenomenal. I love that, how it looks. And again, the laser light right here. How oh, these layers of uh, lighting LED technology. Go around, show you the side profile here. Again, 22 inch rims, 285, 30, 22. It's a tire or rubber wrapped around some Pirelli P0s on all four corners. Again, you barely have any gap right here, like clearance for the wheels. That is insane. 
you want to go after market <laughs> good luck with that guys good luck with that and you guys can see this right here this metal piece behind that uh brake i'm sorry i said in the video ceramic it is an option but this high here is the steel rotors they do the job just fine and behind that is your uh, i guess brake dust protector they are vented just to show you the enormity of how these calipers are uh, rotors are uh, so that needs cooling to get into the VA, you know, either to suck a hot air out or, you know, blow some cool air back in there. Huge, huge brake calipers up front. And again, body colored side mirror. Just that fastback design, I love that a lot. And the back, woof! Again, this is a, it's a very split opinion on, on the, you know, the light bar. Every, now every car manufacturer is doing a light bar right now. You know, that little light bar that goes across. You know, it's all called nuts to your taste and preference. Again, two huge oval exhaust tips. <laughs> when I mean huge, I mean like enormous. Look at this, my whole fist can fit in there, but it's hot because the car is on. It's hot out here in Plano, Texas. But you get the picture. If you see an RS7 or you want to know the difference between an RS and non-RS, a non-RS, like an S4, S3, S6, are gonna have two exhaust tips on both ends. RS models are gonna have oval exhaust tips. Again, that's not a split decision on uh, preference. I kinda like the oval, but I do like the quad exhaust tips, so you see my point. Let's take a look inside here. Again, black outer rings on the back, and if you look closer, this it's your boot lip spoiler comes up at certain speeds whenever you go at seven miles per hour and goes up again help with the airflow but let's go ahead and open this bad boy it is a hatchback or sport back i love this right here chrome aluminum whatever you want to call it huge tons of cargo room Again, it's not gonna be a lot like the RS6 Avant because that is a wagon or an estate. But this being a hatchback, sportback, has this is the amount of cargo room. You know, what do you find in your net? Weather floor mats, some carpets, and then another weather floor mat. This RS7 badging right there. Over here to the side, 12 volt power outlet. You know, you gotta charge your devices. And if you look closer up here, you have your LEDs light to illuminate the trunk late at night, you know, getting back home late. Gives that classy look. Go ahead and shut this. It is uh, powered, so push for a button. See that camera back there? This has the 360 degree camera view. This right here is your reflector. I don't really like that, kind of seems out of place, but it is what it is for now, again sensors for the radar for the um helps to the backup cameras see how close you are to an object also helps the audi side assists move along the side profile the fuel door right here i love how it curves you know because the wheel arch in the rs7 it's just a little bit wider very aggressive so this runs on premium fuel you know tells you on here premium fuel only I love how, love how it's this metal right here, you know, just push that in, clicks, very soft click on that. Um, also, I'm gonna test you guys the soft closing feature, or like the R6 hat, so just lightly tap that. And the window goes up, the door closes. Very nice, very nice. Those wheels, man, for stock, they're very nice. Looks good. And it's a factory tint in the back. I believe the front is not tinted yet, but side skirts right here. Again, helps that stance, aerodynamics, just cut through the air. Makes the car looks more aggressive. Like every little bit you see guys on this car is very functional. There's a better angle of that intercooler for the front, you know, suck cool air in, let cool uh, hot air out. Again, almost no clearance when you turn this car. 
good luck to you aftermarket fans. Just trying to fit nicer wheels on here. It's gonna be a, a pain. All right, let's go into the interior and then go on a test drive. Oh, by the way, this is frameless too. Kind of like where you find the RS. The five, oh yeah, it is tinted. This is like double laminated glass. You can see that right here. That is insane. Let me focus on that. Yep. Again, exposed. Exposed carbon fiber. It's not gloss, just matte looking. Alcantara metal. Leather. Red contrast stitching. Bang and old center sound system. All right. Oh, and then you have your R7 door still right here. Obviously, it's illuminated, but it's daylight. And it's really bright outside. And a little contrasting with the silver for the power adjustable seats. Man, it is hot in here. All right, so this is the interior of the 2021 Audi R7 Sportback. The headliner is not suede or Alcantara. Just cloth, you know, very durable material. Nice, you know, tweeter right here, speakers. The dashboard, similar to the RS6 Avant that I drove two weeks ago. Here's your 360 degree camera view with guidance lines. I'm gonna exit out of that. So I'm gonna start with the Versa cockpit. I've reviewed this countless times in my reviews. Plenty of videos out there. I'm gonna just go go above, you know, quickly go through this. For the RS7, obviously you get a virtual cockpit. This is in the RS mode, so to speak. Right here, RS. Click that, go to RS1. So it is fully customizable. I click the RS1, the exhaust valves opened up, and then RS2. The hanging RPM goes higher and then turns the trash control off and presets limited. <laughs> so let's put that back in comfort. The car quiet is up. So anyways, I digress. So virtual cockpit right here for 2021, virtual cockpit 2.0. I have it in the sport mode settings, go to view, and then obviously this goes to left and right, similar to the RS5. All the gauges are supposed to be circular they are horizontally stacked so you know for the rev and the speedo good luck using this when you're driving because it has an increment of 50. it's not very practical so i have to leave this view right here when i'm in the rs mode just to drive it in general your speed gonna be zero miles per hour one cool feature i like about this when you click view those zero and park they just slide up into the middle they don't you know they don't like fade in fade out it just slides up so that is pretty neat. Again, this car is 1300 miles, so it has been warmed up and broken in. Go back to, I'm gonna go back to my maps right here. So I love how angular that is. You just cut through and click view, see a full map. So that is a brief overview of the virtual cockpit. And again, to your left, your gloss panel black finish right here. You know, for your headlights, automatic, your adaptive high beams assists, and then the metal works on the steering wheel. The steering wheel is my least favorite part of this car because as you can see, it is not flat bottom, but you do have the RS, you know, uh, D car right here, if you wanna call it that. And this is perforated leather steering wheel, 93 grips with the red contrast stitching, which is pretty good. I do like that. And before I forget, aluminum sport pedals for your dead pedal, brake pedal, and the uh, gas pedal. That's pretty cool. You won't let him rev past 4,500 RPMs. Moving along to the center console. So you have the triple thread again, two more screens. Like you see my other videos, just very user friendly, had the feedback, functions, navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, vehicle. Let's go to vehicle, see what that is in there. Audi drive select. So that's the air conditioning. I want drive select, buddy. So Audi drive select. If it's not moving, people always driving by, it makes me nervous. Anyways, you have three settings, dynamic, auto, and comfort. Uh, it's funny, funny how I reviewed the uh, Audi e-tron have seven drive modes. Obviously, it has an SUV with off-road capabilities. You know, this is a small, sporty sedan, so it's a huge difference there. Anyways, I digress. So, this also has the air suspension. You put in dynamic, it goes back down. Comfort, 
the ride goes up. So air suspension, very comfortable. I'm gonna look at our dynamic. And you can see right here, you have your RS mode. You know, the RS, get this camera to focus. RS one and two, when you click this right here, you can customize it the way you want it. You know, you wanna drive to be balanced, sport, suspension, balance, or sport, steering, sport, engine sound present, quattro with sport differential. Let's put that in sport. So, that means brace for <laughs> brace for acceleration when you put that in RS mode. So very user friendly though. I love the new MMI. Kind of I kind of miss the whole old school dial, the rotary dial they had in the um, previous generation Audis. But this is a newer way forward. It works just fine. So it is what it is. And just sliding over across the menu, messages, you gotta know, very user friendly radio. I'm not gonna bore you guys the details. Then again, you have the quad climate control zones. Two in the front, two in the back. The rear passengers also do get the comfort of heated seats. So that's pretty nice to know. I mean, before I forget, right here you have your engine start stop dubbed and uh, wrapped around in a red, you know, black and red. Very, very cool. Audi just like right here again. Stability control on. All this is just touch sensitive. There's no physical buttons. The only physical buttons you get is obviously, obviously for the engine start stop, parking aid, and the Audi pre-sense or driver assistance, so to speak. And the knob right here. Obviously, these are add a pretty previous Audis. And mute that before I get copyright strikes again. <laughs> um, but it's very user friendly. The knob, push that down to mute. You can scroll through the tracks. You know, radio volume knob. This is what it is. My also, also, this is also just like the RS5 shift lever. Very cool. And then again, if you guys remember it in the RS5, you in, you in drive, you took that baby to the right, push this button. <laughs> it just moves back to park. That's pretty cool. Down here, obviously, it's illuminated. The park right here is illuminated, and your release is right here. So, very nice. Again, more piano black on the sides. Some storage cup holders that's eliminated too on the sides. Your 12 volt power outlet. And then, you can adjust my gimbal here. Looking in here, you do have wireless charging pad right here. Some storage, LED lighting, you know, two USB C ports right here. If you can barely see down here, very nice lighting feel. Um, when you have this car, it has wireless um, Apple CarPlay, and you're using this car, you get out the car. The car reminds you your cell phone is in the car and it keeps reminding you your cell phone is in your car until you have a headache. But it works nonetheless. I actually forgot my cell phone in the car and let me know. And this is right here, very soft closing, soft touch, and it slides, you know, fully adjustable. Nice sound suite, nice build quality, very, very soft material. And, you know, so back to the front again, go to the right. You have your Quattro. This is also illuminated at night, so. It's still daylight, can't see that, but I like how just the uh, like levels, you know. Very nice overall comfort um, feel to the front for the driver and passenger. Obviously, this car also has the uh, sunroof on moonroof, you know. It's very typical. It's just a sunroof, not a moonroof. Smaller glass, but that gets the job done nonetheless. Now, let's hop in, into the back, guys. There. And that's not just a window going up because it's a frameless door. All right, you have a coat hanger right here, side vents. Obviously, gonna have one on the passenger or other right hand side. Again, again, same materials in the front, exposed carbon fiber weave, illumination right here for the light. You know, at night, you can see Alcantara, leather, and legroom. There's plenty of legroom right here. 6'2, this is my driving position. The cutouts, obviously, for the knee, so. It just works just fine. Again, the sports seat is just uh, it's so sexy, guys. Like, it's just, Audi makes one of the best sports seats, in my opinion. Obviously, I have Audis, BMWs, Mercedes. You no, know, Audis really have the sports seats down. Comfort, looks, practicality, functionality, does it all. But I have some legroom right here. And like I said, four climate control zones, two more USB-C ports right here in the back for the back passengers. And then you have your 12 volt power outlet for the passengers, you know, heated seats for the rear passengers, left and right. And you can adjust the fan direction if you want. So that's pretty good. Overall, just from this view right here, 
looking in the car, guys, it's just insane. Like the, it's just a nice view from the rear passenger. You know, the, just like all they imagine driving this car. If you see in the back, I would hate to be in the back seat of this car because how practical and how nice it is. I can only imagine how good this car will look at night. Just illumination everywhere. You know, so overall, guys, this car is very practical on the inside. I already walked around the exterior, brief overview of that. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the engine and she can go on a test drive. So I'm gonna try to drive the car in comfort and dynamic, see what it's like, the ride quality, braking, acceleration, power delivery. You guys already know, and I'll see you guys there. So you guys are ready for this, but. Twin turbocharged V8, cranking out 600 horsepower, roughly around 600 pound feet of torque. And I do love how in the newer Audis, like in the RS6, it's like this huge V8 up front with four liters, and then you have some storage right here, I guess, or just some room right here on the side. You know, the engine can breathe better. And then to the right over here, you have your easily accessible ECU for my you know, Audi fanboys, like the two new cars, you know, just, the engine layout is just nice. And the tur twin turbo charge uh, V8, the turbos are kind of tough mounted and like a hot V kind of setup. So this right here and the little aluminum ceiling, it's kind of actually cold to the touch, surprisingly. But uh, it says, don't touch that. I just did, so don't do that though. RS right here, Audi. So it's a very, very nice and good looking engine bay. I like that a lot and it's really quiet. So, and then you have your double catch right here, one over here. One over here, double struck. So overall, very nice, clean engine bay. You know, I want to see what this car drives like now. I'll see you guys there. But this car just builds up power and the boost, very, very low end RPM. Again, twin turbocharged V8 out of that four liter bi turbo or twin turbo, pushing around 600 horsepower, almost the same around in pound feet of torque in all four wheels. So. Mind you, this uh, four liter by turbo has been in different Audi lineups in previous generations, even the, its predecessor, the C6 or C7 RS7. So this one has also shared the same engine you have in Bentleys, all the Volkswagen or VAG lineup. This twin turbo V8 is gonna be very similar. Obviously with 2021, you have, you know, better technology newer turbos you know the, the twin scroll turbochargers and it's very very familiar platform or engine response so to speak because it's a whole new platform for the rs7 and this one also has the rear wheel steering wheel so if you again if you know what that means you can google that basically uh, in layman's terms whenever the front wheels are turning one direction the rear wheels on lower speed would turn in the opposite direction and then on the higher speeds they're going to turn in the same direction for better stability uh, cornering all that good stuff on the track especially on the track that's when you get a true uh, advantage of the rear wheel steering and just to see the driving makes this car very easily maneuverable around town tight bends makes parking a whole lot easier it's very quiet, not as quiet as the e-tron, obviously. This is not electric, this is fully gas-powered V8. And I love the way this car just rumbles. Just an idle, uh, when this car is just idling, you can hear that rumble sound from that from that engine up front. I and mean, just the front end of this car is very aggressive looking. I'll be scared driving in front of this car if I see this uh, headlights in my rear. I know this car is menacing looking. It's just built for speed. Why would you want to get an RS7 if you can easily buy the RS6? Well, for one, if you're not in the U if you're not in UK, good luck getting your hands on the RS6 because they're a very, very limited number that's already in the US. And if you can find one, it's probably already sold. So you're out of luck there. The RS7 is also kind of limited too. It's very hard to come by one of these. So I'm very fortunate to drive this and bring a bit of review to you guys. But overall, the seats are kind of similar. It's the same to the RS6 Avant rear seat as well. The only difference is the RS6 Avant has more cargo room because it's an estate or a wagon and this one is just <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness Woo! excuse me boys you remember last week I drove the e-tron and I just put my foot down my brain was trying to catch up to the amount of speed I think just you know power but this one I knew what to expect boost transmission boom send it you see like i'm trying to adjust the climate control 
um, fan speed, I have to look down, you know, in my S3, I can just, you know, with a knob or something, just push a button, I'd have to look down so I don't get distracted. That's one thing about the buttons. I do wish I could go back to buttons, just leave it. If it's not broken, don't fix it, you know, if it works, it works. Well, if you guys stay to the end of this video, I really, really, really appreciate your time. If you see my face for the first time, I highly recommend you look around my channel, see what you like, subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new video by hitting that bell icon in the bottom right and then like the video because it helps my YouTube algorithm so my videos get ranked up and leave a positive comment down below, you know, what you think or what car you want to get or what car you want me to review next and I can consider that into my review list. Well, it's been fun guys. I'll see you guys next time in a different video. Peace out and stay driven.